Hello, welcome to the Red Ben TV. I've just realised that I always open with the arms like that. Um, it's daily news time. Um, we're on the eve of Liverpool versus Arsenal. Um, so it seems only fitting that a target for both Liverpool and Arsenal is the subject of this video. And that man is... Thomas Lamar, Monaco starlet, 22 year old, um, linked with a 90 million pound move to Liverpool. Uh, the Independent to report Liverpool to make January offer for Thomas Lamar with Monaco forward favouring Reds move over Arsenal, which is fantastic, isn't it? I mean, just for the fact that convincing a Frenchman to not go to, well, to basically swear Arsenal Wenger and come to a German is bosh. Because um, for too long now, uh, Arsene Wenger has, has hoovered up the French talent, hasn't he? Um, so I think that's quite interesting in and of itself. Um, the Independent, as read here, is Liverpool going for Thomas Lamar. As they attempt to bolster their chances of securing a top four spot and beat Arsenal to the French international signature. Jürgen Klopp has a long standing interest in the 22 year old forward, and the belief at Anfield is that his first choice is Liverpool, even though Arsenal came close to signing him in. August, blah, 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 Alexis Sanchez, blah, blah, blah. Liverpool could be in a broadly similar situation as the Alexis Sanchez one at Arsenal, as they anticipate Barcelona coming back for Phil Coutinho, although there is more to their interest in Lamar than that. Um, while the club do not want to be in a situation where any sale leaves them short of options, Lamar has targeted someone to give Klopp even more attacking variety and create what may be one of the fastest attacking lineups in the world. Like the sound of that. Like the sound of that. I'm going to go over to Empire of the Cop, who say they've got a Thomas Lamar exclusive. Uh, Red's bid for Monaco starts totally separate from the Coutinho rumour. And this is Jordan, Jordan Chamberlain for Empire of the Cop. Um, club have no plans to offload Coutinho and want the Frenchman on top of the current attack. Me likey, likey, likey. Um, so, yeah, a source close to Anfield. Um, okay, let's read the law because it tells you about a, a little bit more about it. Liverpool's January bid for Monaco's Thomas Lamar is not dependent at all on the club cashing in on Coutinho, Empire of the Cop can reveal. A source close to Anfield has informed us that this winter Liverpool will go for the Frenchman while continuing our not-for-sale stance on Phil Coutinho. Wow. Um, again, Empire of the Cop uh, is someone that we've done a lot of work with over the years and stuff. Um, now, this is quite a character for Empire of the Copper, if I'm perfectly honest. They do not normally report something as an exclusive unless they know. Um, so just like the way that yesterday I was talking about the gossip column in the Metro and stuff, the Empire of the Cop, they do a lot of transfer rumours just like we do as well. Um, they have put their neck on the line on this one, and I think that counts for something, if I'm perfectly honest with you. So I like that. Uh, yesterday, Catalan Outlet Sport published a lengthy editorial, which we went through, and suggested Barcelona's continuing transfer is virtually finalised, with a few moves on £130 million. Liverpool have not changed our position from the summer. Like to hear that. Liverpool have not sat down with Barcelona about a sale, nor have they any plans to do so in the immediate future, despite the player's obvious and irrefutable longing for the Camp Nou. We are not privy to whether Coutinho is representative of Met Barca's, but Liverpool will not significantly weaken the side mid-season when we're still in the Champions League. This January, Coutinho will not be sold by Liverpool, who have witnessed their number 10 during the best form of his life uh, following his infamous transfer request. I mean, wow. That is a great article to read as a Liverpool fan, isn't it? So if you've seen that yourself, I'm sure you'll be made up with that. Um, we will get in to the comments in a bit. We'll start reading some of Carlos David's Milky Bar Kid comments because they're always fun to read uh, amongst others. Um, okay, obviously it is on the eve of the Liverpool Arsenal game so I think we need to talk a little bit about that and Arsene Wenger's talked about the unpredictability of Liverpool's rotation. Now Jack Lusby's made an article like this for This Is Anfield. Arsene Wenger admits the England club squad rotation has hampered his preparations as he seeks a response to Arsenal's thrashing, thrashing at Liverpool. Um, this is something that I think every Liverpool fan's kind of known, they might not have vocalised it, but I think we all know that making a lot of changes a lot of the time does make it difficult for a team to prepare for you. Are we going to play three at the back? Are we going to play 4-3-3? Three, three? Are we going to play 4-4-2? Four, four, is it going to be that 4-2-2-2 two, two, two variation? Uh, it makes it very, very difficult. Not only have we been changing formation over the last few weeks, but we've also been changing the personnel and the type of uh, type of sort of attacking combinations as well that we've enjoyed success with over the last few weeks and stuff. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, obviously we smashed Arsenal last time out. They played three at the back last time out. I doubt they'll do that again, although I did just do a video with Robbie that's out on the channel now where he thinks they might go three at the back again. I think that's suicide going against Liverpool with three at the back, but Robbie thought, even though they've been playing the 4-2-3-1, watch the video, watch the video, watch the video. Um, Liverpool are very good going forward, says Arsene Wenger. So you see a very good overall defensive performance, he told reporters on Thursday. We have to analyse that as well. And as well, you have to guess a little bit who will play. It's not always the same. It depends on their personnel. They have plenty of offensive players. And looking at them recently, they've changed a lot of their team. It's difficult to guess. But we have tried to see what I'll do. But for me, the most important thing is we turn up and it's a positive performance. We've been strong at home and it's important we continue to dictate our game at home. So that is Arsene Wenger talking to the press pre uh, the Liverpool match on Friday. Um, okay, so have we got any comments from, from here on in, mate? Uh, so, yeah, talking about the Lamar stuff, there didn't seem to be an awful lot of positivity about it, to be honest. You've got Amar and Gil said we don't need Lamar, and Sally and Never Walk Alone says the same, don't need them. Uh, Jawad Khan says, I don't want Lamar, we've got Ox, we just need to go a couple of defenders. And then I actually asked wow. a question saying, would you take Lamar for 90 million? And no one said yeah. A few people said no, but no one said yeah. Wow, okay, that's, that's really shocked me, actually. Um, me too. I'm, I think he's a great player. I think he. I think he really is. I mean, I'm a little surprised. You know, we did a show yesterday where me and Paul and and Tom were talking about Thomas Lamar and stuff. Now, I would absolutely take him. I would rather have Phil Coutinho over Thomas Lamar. Um, I think that's that's my opinion, and that's fair to, fair of me to say it. But he is a good player. He's a, he's a very very good player. He struggled a little bit this season. But then so is that entire Monaco side, you know, assets stripped and all that type of stuff. Um, I'd be really excited if Liverpool are looking to, to, to land a £90 million player to add to this side. That shows a level of ambition that Liverpool have not shown in recent years. Uh, whether he turns out to be a good player or not, that remains to be seen. My hunch is that he will be a good player for us if we were to snare him. But... Liverpool will spend the 90 million quid when we've got Salah, we've got Mane, we've got Firmino, we've got Coutinho, we've got Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. That's a sign of intent and that might be the, the, the signing to make us rise up through the Premier League. You know what I mean? So I'm really surprised that you aren't all loving that to be perfect. One thing to think you. about it is, even though even that Empire of the Copper article that says we're not selling Coutinho in January, I think it's clear that he's going in the summer, so they're bringing Lamar in in January to kind of plug him in before sense, we lose Coutinho. I've got a similar sort of comment from Gary Paul who said, we operated sell to buy, so does anyone actually believe it's nothing to do with selling Coutinho? No, I think I think size is the nail on the head there, to be honest. I think he, he is someone that we want to bring in. You know, it might be the last few months of Phil Coutinho at Liverpool. Get him in, get him to sit, get him used to the system before the start of the season. Because the last thing you want is we sell Phil Coutinho, our star player, or one of our star players, let's say at the end of the season, right to Barcelona. Thomas Lamar comes in. He has a pre-season with us, but he doesn't click straight away. You know, he's not settled in his home life, his family, if he's got family over here with him, aren't settled. Get that done and dusted in January and make sure that on the first day of next season, he's your star man and he's fully integrated into the team. And it's also, you've also got the thing of not everyone knows we've got loads of money. Uh, we've already spent the Phil Coutinho money and stuff like that. So, for, like, if it's Thomas Lamar, Sadio Mane, Mo Salah, Bobby Firmino, Oxlade-Chamberlain, sounds because let's be honest we probably are going to lose Phil Coutinho so we've got to get a replacement in um, if you don't want Thomas Lamar who do you want let me know in the comment section so I'll read some of them out very very shortly we're going to get on to the last piece of news then for the day Liverpool's Daniel Sturridge facing World Cup heartbreak as Jürgen Klopp plans to keep him alone Danny Ings reports the Daily Mirror uh, two Spanish clubs want Danny Sturridge Daniel Sturridge uh, he needs to be playing to make the England squad apparently Jürgen Klopp is thinking of letting Danny Ings leave on loan uh, but that will mean he has to keep a frustrated Daniel Sturridge. I think the reason that Sturridge would be frustrated, he's 28 now, uh, it's potentially his last World Cup as an England player. Uh, Gareth Southgate's come out and said, you've got to be starting regularly week in, week out for you to get a place in his England squad, whether you agree with that or you don't. Um, yeah, so I think Sturridge probably wants to go to the World Cup with it potentially being his last one. He wants to break into this side. He wants to be playing football, ultimately. I don't think it's just about the World Cup. I think he just wants to play football. I think he thinks he's better than uh, perhaps he's being utilised by Jürgen Klopp. Uh, so I think that's really interesting as well. Um, let me know if you'd if you'd sell Daniel Sturridge or if you'd rather keep Daniel Sturridge against his wishes. Uh, I think we'll need him personally. 
I think we really will towards the end of the season. I don't think under-23s football for Danny Ings is going to get him back to the level that we want to get him back to. Uh, whether he can get those minutes in the first team remains to be seen. My, my guess is if Klopp's looking to offload him in January, that, that means he doesn't think he's going to get the minutes to get him back to where he needs to be to be actually challenging for a starting place in this Liverpool side. Simon, have we got any answers to the Thomas Lamar or somebody else uh, question? We've got, we've got a, from Cato Mania says, I think we should unfortunately let Sturridge go. I really like him, but I also want him to play all the time and he won't do that at Liverpool. Yeah, I, I fully agree with that, mate. Uh, James Langton says, Coutinho leaving is inevitable. Uh, we need Lamar to replace him early, so we're not running around in the summer overpaying. Certainly need a centre-back still. Uh, Macmiliano195 says, Koulibaly, Van Dijk and Fabinho, mate, will then we will be safe at the back, especially if we're using the 4-3-3. Yeah, um, I've not seen too much of Fabinho, but I agree with the Koulibaly and Van Dijk shouts. Uh, I've not seen enough of Fabinho to say whether I think he'd fit in or not. Uh, I'll have to trust you on that one. Well, Aaron Rennick yeah, says, if you get Lamar in for 90 million, what does that mean for the signings of a goalkeeper or a centre half, etc.? Um, I am still harbouring hope that Lamar will be signed alongside a centre back. I think ultimately for me, uh, and I think for Liverpool, um, we will be 100% talking about a centre back coming in in January. Um, Hopefully that will be Virgil van Dijk if the door opens and Liverpool are willing to push their way and barge their way through it before Manchester City and Chelsea do that. Um, I think that was summer money. I think we all know that we wanted Virgil van Dijk in the summer. I don't think that £90 million eats into the centre-backs money, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, the new goalkeeper one, I would guess that that's probably going out the window. Um, I don't think we'll be signing a goalkeeper in January regardless, if I'm perfectly honest. I do think that'll be if uh, Carius hasn't forced his way into the first team by the end of the season. We could look to sign somebody um, in the summer. Uh, Gary Paul, Chris, he's still an FSG supporter. Uh, never been an FSG supporter, mate. Uh, always been a Liverpool supporter. Um, that's that. Uh, okay, I do remember you from the live stream, Silver Lining Gaming. There you go, Chrissy. Uh, we've done that one. Chris, how do you Miles think we'll 20. cope? Sorry, Miles Miles 20 I'm Chris. reading that one right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. How do you think we'll cope? Should we not do anything in January? I think we'll be all right, you know, Milesy. Um, I think we've seen that, you know, Liverpool have now got 13 clean sheets in the last 24 games. We've seen an improvement defensively, and I, and I don't mean individual. Uh, defenders. I mean, the whole team's working harder together and working harder to keep those clean sheets and keep goals out. Now, yes, and when we've, con when we've conceded goals, we've conceded lots of goals at the same time, unfortunately. Um, we're not overcommitting men going forward. I think we've got a big enough squad to challenge um, for what we want to challenge for this season. Whether we've got a big enough squad and a good enough squad to win something big this season, um, that, that would... If we went into the second part of the year with nobody else... I couldn't imagine us winning uh, a competition, but I think if we do sign somebody, we've got a good chance, certainly, at the FA Cup if we can get past Everton in the third round of that. Uh, and on our day, we can beat anybody in the Champions League because of that attack. Um, but they've all got to be fit and they've all got to be firing, uh, and that's what failed us last time out, isn't it, in January? Chris, we don't have Lamar. We don't, Lam we don't Lamar, where would he play? Because of Mane and Salah. I actually think he'd drop into sort of a, midf a creative midfielder role. I don't know he's been playing out on the left-hand side and stuff, but that place in the squad that Phil Coutinho probably is going to vacate, the I'm going to play on the wing and I'm going to play in centre-mid, I think Lamar would be perfect for that. I think he'd be a great signing for us and a, an instant replacement for Phil Coutinho, if not maybe at the level of Phil Coutinho. But he's a couple of years behind, you know, he's got a high ceiling. Um, could be as high, if not higher, than Phil Coutinho. Um, so there you go, that's been the Daily News Show. Hi, Paul. Hello. Do you want to show everyone your haircut? Come on, let's have a look. Up. Let us know what you think of Paul's hair and his Christmas wrapping paper. Hi. Hi. Does he love it? Does everyone love it? Oh, I, I didn't see a message on the cork. No problem. Uh, that's me asking for a corkscrew if you could near. Um, because we've got a, I've got a bottle of wine for later to our Christmas party tonight, and I've got we got loads of beer, Jack Daniel's honey, sambuca. And a nice bottle of Pinot Grigio for Page App, but no corkscrew, so we're going to have to work out a way of getting into that. Uh, I'm sure we'll just YouTube it, to be fair. Uh, that always has the answer. Paul, I love that McDonald's hairline. I don't get it either. Yeah, the Widow's Peak. Ah, it's lovely. Okay, well, there you go. That is the live show. Um... <laughs>
Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time on the Redburn TV.